if you're looking for love, if you're on the pathway for love, if love isn't working out for you, most of the reason that that's happening is because you're mirroring where you're at. You're mm -hmm. mirroring the frequency of where you're at. Mm -hmm. And so life is trying to show you, hey, look, you have work to do. Yeah. Right? And so if you want an amazing partnership and if you want lasting love, it first starts with you. Yes. Right? You have to first love, honor, commit to yourself and have integrity where you are with your word, with your actions. Mm -hmm. um, you have to really get to say, hey, I matter enough to take time for myself every single day. I definitely had a pathway full of pain. Mm. You know, um, when I was six years old, my mother, she left my brothers and I, I'm the oldest of three boys. And um, from that moment when she left, a lot of things broke apart. Right. I mean, obviously, when you have a parent leave you, you start to wonder if you're lovable, if you're enough, if you're worthy. Is it me? You start to try to create all of these narratives and stories that create so much damage and so much pain. I get a call from Chris, the director, and he's like, I need your help. And I was like, what do you mean? And he's like, my lead actress, who was a top model at the time, she had just gotten this huge campaign that paid her hundreds of thousands of dollars. And so she dropped out the oh, day before right. principal photography. Um, and so right before the movie was about to start, he's like, I don't know anybody who can pull this ro role off other than you, like okay. right now. And I was like, but Chris, I'm not acting. <laughs> I had stopped acting. He's like, yeah, but you're going to start again. And I was like, no, I'm not going to start again. He's like, yes, you are. I'm bringing the script over now. And so Crazy. long, long story. I, I read the script. It was incredible. Um, yep. So fun. So fresh. So fantastic. Um, and I, I, I had to say yes. And I'm so grateful that I did. Yeah. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Oh, of course, honey. It's my pleasure. I'm so proud of you for committing to your word and doing what you said you were going to do. Thank you so much for being a guest on my podcast today. I really appreciate your time. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. You're more than welcome. <laughs> but for everybody listening that doesn't quite know you yet, could you give us a brief introduction on who you are and what you do? Well, hello, everybody. It's a pleasure to meet you. Um, my name is Shanoa Maxwell, and I am an emotional intelligence specialist. Um, but really what that means is I am a light worker, um, a, a mirror for your greatness, and somebody who is really equipped to help you with pathways that can really change your life for the better. Mm -hmm. um, to help you dissolve your limitations so that you can live limitlessly. Beautiful. And <laughs> you got started off acting, right? So I did. Tell us a little bit about how you got started and what drew you into wanting to become an actress in the first place. Sure. Um, yeah, my, my very first passion um, was acting. And it was interesting. At the time, um, I was actually in college. Um, studying to be an anesthesiologist. Uh -huh. um, I always was interested in helping other people. Mm -hmm. um, I thought my pathway at that time was um, the path of being a doctor. And then I switched my uh, major and I started studying psychology. Um, and then I just kept moving because I knew that I hadn't arrived at where I was destined to be. Yeah. Uh, things just weren't feeling right. I was really listening more to my head than my heart. Yeah. And so I went out on a quest. Um, I was dating someone at the time, a really beautiful person who said, you know, Shno, you're so awesome. And every time I see you going down this pathway of studying to be a doctor, you seem so unhappy. Oh, Why don't you take off a semester and figure out what you want to do? 
like go and figure yourself out. And he said, and I will actually support you. So if you want to start working half, you know, part time, I'll provide the other half of that income so that you can really find your way, which was such a blessing. Yes. And, and so I did, I, I took off, um, that semester of school and I just <laughs> crazily just started walking the streets. And I've always been somebody who has communicated with God very clearly. Um, I, you know, for some people, I know that many don't call God, God, but I've always had that universal connection to God and mm -hmm. to source, to divine source power. And I would just literally get up and walk down the streets of New York crying because I was so unhappy. I, I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. And I ended up at this, um, I had to use the restroom and it was pouring down rain. And I kept knocking on, um, you know, businesses doors and it's so funny that we're dealing with all this racial tension right now but I couldn't mm. go and nobody would open up the door for me to go to the bathroom and I was young and uh finally I got into this 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 building and I saw this all these people in there and I knocked on the door and I was like hey can I go to the bathroom please Aww. and this woman opened the door and she's like of course you can come on in and she she let me into her room and I went to the bathroom and then after I came from the bathroom she said sit down. And I said, okay, I, I'm not here for anything. I just wanted to use the bathroom. She says, no, sit down. You're going to take this class with us. And it was an acting class. Wow. And, <laughs> and it was so odd because I started seeing people like, you know, if you, if you've ever been to an acting class or for those of you who have never been to an acting class, we do a lot of strange things, you know, because we, you know, we have to, find ways to, you know, move outside of ourselves, yeah. release our attention, get really relaxed, and then move into that human awareness of becoming someone else or the characteristics yeah. of someone else. And so we're, you know, I'm in this class and they're moving their mouth, blah, blah, and they're doing their jaws and they're stretching. And I'm like, oh my God, this is, right? what is this? crazy. <laughs> what is this? And um, ironically, I started doing it and it was the first time I ever felt like myself. Wow. I felt so full and so whole. And yeah. I literally relate it to like a full body orgasm. Like I didn't, you know, have that you know, sexual experience, but I did feel yeah. that pathway into wholeness and fullness and satisfaction. And like, I felt like I arrived home. Wow. And so that was how I got started in acting. And I know it was a long winded story, but it's, it's a beautiful path for people yeah. who are still searching for their purpose or, you know, listening is so important when you're, when you're not fully where you're supposed to be and you keep having these pangs that something yeah. isn't right. Mm -hmm. That deep listening is so important. So. You're correct. I love your long winded stories. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. Um, one of your major roles was in Have Plenty, which was such a great film. How did you initially get that role? And what did you learn from working with such an amazing cast? Well, thank you for that. Um, have Plenty. I'm so honored to have been the lead character of that movie. Um, it's such a cult classic. Yes. Um, 20 years later, people are still recognizing me on the street and sending me texts and messages and they are true fans. It's yep. really a beautiful role that I was able to play. So I am in much gratitude for <laughs> the director, writer, producer, Christopher Scott Chereau. He was mm -hmm. awesome and he did awesome. Um, how I got started in Have Plenty was interesting. I um, I actually did an open call um, for Christopher's first film, um, and he was um, an NYU student, an NYU film student, and he was doing his thesis film, okay. and um, so I did an open call, and the call was, I'm talking about hundreds of people around the corner in New York City auditioning for this film, Jeez. and... Um, so I got a, a role in that film mm -hmm. and I did that film and it was fantastic. And we had a great time making that movie. And a couple of years later, after I had actually stopped acting, um, I was studying to be a director of photography because as many of people know, I, I also became a photographer for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And so I had already moved into that opening of becoming a photographer, studying that. And I get a call from Chris, the director, and he's like, I need your help. And I was like, what do you mean? And he's like, my lead actress, who was a top model at the time, she had just gotten this huge campaign that paid her 
hundreds of thousands of dollars. And so she dropped out the oh, day before nice. principal photography. Um, and so right before the movie was about to start, he's like, I don't know anybody who can pull this ro role off other than you, like well, right now. And I was like, but Chris, I'm not acting. <laughs> I had stopped acting. He's like, yeah, but you're going to start again. And I was like, no, I'm not going to start again. He's like, yes, you are. I'm bringing the script over now. And so long, long story, I, I read the script. It was incredible. Um, yep. So fun, so fresh, so fantastic. Um, and I, I, I had to say yes. And I'm so yeah. grateful that I did. Yeah. That's amazing. Go Chanel. That's a great story. <laughs> Um, even when you're not looking for things, the things that are meant for you will always find you. That's really beautiful. Thank you for that. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's why I always tell people who are on the path, you know, don't, you don't have to, um, all you have to do is stay on your path. Mm. If you're being authentic with yourself and you're being good to yourself and to the world, your divine path is always going to come back and find you. Same mm -hmm. for love. Beautiful. And like you just mentioned, upon transitioning out of your acting profession, what made you want to leave and go into photography in the first place? Well, that's a great question, Anita. Um, wow. <sighs> I'm trying to figure out how to answer that because, um, you know, when I started acting, it was in the 90s, um, mm -hmm. in the late 90s. Um, and things were really different back then. Mm -hmm. um, the roles were very limited, um, and the roles that we had been offered were not so exciting sometimes. And, mm -hmm. and every once in a while, it just felt like you were beating your head against a stone that wasn't going to really open up in the expression that you had hoped for. Yeah. Um, I felt like after being a leading lady and had been in several movies, um, with so many major stars. I mean, there were ne not that many leading ladies of color at the time. There was just a few of us. I mean, Halle Berry, Nia Long, um, you know, myself, um, Vivica Fox, you know, yeah. there, there were very many of us. Um, Queen Latifah, uh, you know, uh, Jada Pinkett. There was just a handful. Yeah. And what I found was that, you know, you would, you would get to a place where you thought you had reached your pinnacle of success. I'm a leading lady. I have my billboards up in the street. And then you have to start all over again. Back to zero. Mm. Back to zero. Like you never made a mark. Like you never did anything great. And that was really heartbreaking for me. Yeah. Um, I felt like I was back being an abused person. I, I, if, if you guys follow my story, I had come from a really challenging childhood with filled with a lot of abuse and physical, verbal, mental abuse. And I just felt that I wasn't, I felt abused. I didn't have a mentor at the time. I didn't have anybody who could say, hey, let me guide you and say, just stick in there, you know, yeah. just set your path. Things will change. Things will open. You're great at what you do. Um, and so that, in addition to the sexual inappropriateness of our um, business. Um, you know, many of you guys know Harvey Weinstein was my producer. And there was just so many things that were under the current mm -hmm. during that time that we had to endure. I just felt like, I don't know if this is something that I can keep pouring every bit of my being into yeah. any longer without me feeling like I'm losing myself. Mm -hmm. And so I just decided to pivot and the arts was what I knew. It saved my life. It's something that I'm, I'm still a big creative um, in mind, body and spirit. And so I said, you know, what else can I do that I can still continue supporting this pathway? And yeah. I searched myself and I've always been somebody who loved photos and pictures and that, that, storytelling so I went into photography that is beautiful oh man I'm sorry about the hard time that you had with the acting and feeling like you was playing tug of war with yourself and that's yeah. sad yeah but at least you were honest to follow your heart you know that's the main thing Chanel <laughs> yeah no, I know it's it you have to follow your heart I mean you know you have to live with yourself for every choice that you make and yeah. um if you're not making choices that fill you in spirit 
you'll pay a hard cost, right? Yes, very true, very true. I was first introduced to you on the incredible show, Love in the City. And ah. I remember asking you in Bali about how that got started. But for everyone listening, can you tell us how that show initially came about and why you lovely girls wanted to do it? Sure, yeah. Love in the City, um, for many of you that don't know or who are unfamiliar with it, was a show that Oprah Winfrey literally, um, when she saw it come across her table, she said, absolutely right now. Like when I say absolutely right now, in Hollywood, shows don't get pitched and made within the same year most <laughs> of the time. It's a process. It takes forever. And sometimes you pitch and you pitch and you pitch and you pitch and you pitch. And, and, and they say yes to the show and the show ends up sitting on the table and never getting greenlit. It's, yeah. it's, always, it's always so much stuff. But in this particular case, um, I have some really dynamic girlfriends. Um, I always believe you are the company that you keep. And so um, we have, um, we've been, you know, in the industry for a long time. I'm Kaya Wright. Um, she's the hairstylist to the stars. She's got a really colorful and wonderful personality. And, um, you know, Tiffany Jones and Bershawn Shaw, you know, we were all kind of, Kaya was my, one of my best friends. And so we would, constantly keep pitching show ideas to Hollywood. And we have a girlfriend, D'Angela Seed, who's in boss. Like she is a boss. She's a beautiful woman of color. And she's just somebody who makes things happen in Hollywood. Yeah. And she's a huge producer. And she kept watching us and she was like, you guys, you're missing the point. Like you are the show. <laughs> She's like, you guys need to have a show. And so we started kind of thinking about what that show would look like and formulating the ideas and going back and forth. And uh, D'Angela and Kaya came up with this really great idea about putting friends together yeah. like us who, you know, instead of going after one another and, and attacking one another, because we never really did that, we would show the world that there's so much drama in our normal day-to-day -day life that that is the drama. We don't have to go against each other. We can support each other as women, yeah. as women of color, as friends, yeah. and just empower each other with showing the world how you can handle your normal day-to-day -day drama yeah. and challenges with class and, and with, with support of others and your yeah. friendships. So Oprah created the show um, in record time and, and we did it and it was fun and fantastic to leave a legacy that will go on and on and on with your friends. <laughs> yes, I loved it. It was so relatable. I love watching you girls talk through your relationships and your friendships. And it was just really great advice watching as a young girl on how I'm going to navigate like my future. So I loved that. Yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you're more than welcome. You have such an amazing relationship with your now husband that's flourishing. And you were also <laughs> married previously. Do you have any advice for people that are currently transitioning out of a relationship and worry about if they will ever find love again? Well, yes, of course. Um, you know, my biggest thing, you know, my platform is love. Live Limitlessly is all about love and love when you are aligned with divine love. And so let me just explain that for a little bit because it's very important when you are searching for love or even when you have love. Mm. Um, until you are aligned in knowing who you are, yeah. meaning you have to really know yourself because most of the times we go after things we think we want or we think we need, but that doesn't have anything to do with who we are or who, or what we value. Mm. And so we end up getting into these careers or relationships. And at some point we go, this isn't serving me. Yeah because we haven't done the inside work. Yeah. And when you have alignment with divine source power, um, whatever you want to call it, divine light, divine love, God, mm -hmm. the highest energy, the highest frequency of the world, that mm -hmm. is a scientific fact. Um, then you are plugged into your own personal power. You have the cosmic intelligence that gets downloaded into every single bit of yourselves. You know the pathway you're supposed to take. You don't have to second guess yourself. You're more um, rooted in your self-love, in your um, confidence. Um, you're full, you're yeah. whole. 
And so if you're looking for love, if you're on the pathway for love, if love isn't working out for you, most of the reason that that's happening is because you're mirroring where you're at. You're mm -hmm. mirroring the frequency of where you're at. Mm -hmm. And so life is trying to show you, hey, look, you have work to do. Yeah. Right? And so if you want an amazing partnership and if you want lasting love, it first starts with you. Yes. Right? You have to first love, honor, commit to yourself and have integrity where you are with your word, with your actions. Mm -hmm. um, you have to really get to say, hey, I matter enough to take time for myself every single day. Yeah. Right? And then really nurture yourself in a holistic fashion where you're really aligned with all of those things. And then you will find yourself as a magnet for love. So you'll never have to worry about looking or searching or wanting or wishing for love again. Love will find you because mm -hmm. you are love or that full expression of it. I love that, Chanel. It's so true. So many people go searching for it, but if you just stay still and look within, your vibration will just radiate out and everything you deserve, it will come and find you. Just wait for it. I love yeah. it. I mean, you have to look within, but you also have to do the work. I mean, we are people who are, we love escapism. Mm. We love distracting ourselves. We love yeah. numbing ourselves because going inside means that when we have to really sit with who we are and go, wait a second, everything that is occurring for me is my fault and my responsibility. Yeah. And I have no one else to blame for where I'm at. Ooh. That's when we get back. Woo, I don't know if I really want to do yeah. the work. You gotta get me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But the inside work is so lovely. It's so juicy. It's so um full of everything that you're searching for. And so you have to actually start to identify what your blind spots are, mm. what your blockages are, what your triggers are, what your emotional needs are, what your values are. There's so many things yeah. before you get to that other desire, if you want it to last. <laughs> just bounce around and enjoy that too. That is it. No, definitely. The long lasting game is it. For my single people out there, what advice would you give them as keys to finding their life partner if they've never even had a touch of love yet? Oh, if you've never had a touch of love, which I don't believe that because we're all expressions of love. Um, I, would, I would recommend actually coming to one of my courses. Um, no, honestly, I mean, not to be self-brandizing or self-promoting, but hmm. I have actually been through so many different paths to, to arrive at my purpose. Mm -hmm. And... If it's not me, I would recommend everybody like finding somebody that they trust or that they relate to or that they can hear on a soul level to take them to the next plane of their existence, yeah. to elevate themselves. If you haven't found love, then usually you're blocked from it from some way, mm -hmm. right? Either it's, it's because you haven't really truly wanted it. Um, sometimes we say we want things and then we really don't. Mm -hmm. It's because you're afraid of it. It's because you're blocked from it. It's because it hasn't found you yet for so many other reasons. You're not prepared for it. You're not ready for it. There are so many things. But in the, in the meantime and in between time, if you constantly keep elevating yourself, your mm -hmm. consciousness, your being, your body, yep. um, your, your, your brand, your business, your money, mm -hmm. your financial savviness, um, when you do have it, you're going to be prepared to actually keep it yes. more than anybody else will. Yes. And you'll meet somebody at that same frequency. And so that's going to be super exciting for you. So yeah, if you want to, I, think, I have my peace, power, love, virtual one immersive sessions that do start in a few weeks. That's amazing. Yeah. Chanel is the best guy. So tap in. And so now currently as an emotional and soul intelligence coach with your own beautiful company, Live Limitlessly, can you explain what brought you into this field of work and why your work is so, so important? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, as I mentioned to you before, I, I definitely had a pathway full of pain, mm. you know, um, when I was six years old, my mother, she left my brothers and I, I'm the oldest of three boys. And, um, from that moment when she left, a lot of things broke apart, right? I mean, obviously, when you have a parent leave you, you start to wonder if you're lovable, if you're enough, if you're worthy, is it me? You start to try to create all of these narratives and stories that create so much damage and so much pain. 
in addition to that, some of the adults that we were with really abused us um, on so many levels, emotionally, physically, sexually. Um, we were really, um, I myself was, um, I've been through everything. You know, at 15, I tried to kill myself. I'm a suicide survivor. Um, things got so bleak and I was so full of despair. Um, and I had nowhere to go. I didn't know what to do. I had no solutions. I had nobody that I could trust or turn to. Um, and I just, I just felt like I didn't understand why life was worth living. So after I tried to commit suicide, I ended up in a psychiatric unit for adolescents for two months where they did a lot of um, psychiatric evaluations where, to see if I had any you know, mental issues or if I had any chemically uh, imbalanced issues. And what they found was that I didn't have any of those. I had a really high IQ and that there was, the only thing that was wrong with me was that I wasn't getting nurtured. I wasn't getting loved as a child and my environment was terrible. So I was blessed. Um, and this is part of my path and part of my purpose, which is why I know this for sure. I was, I was matched with the top doctor there. Um, her name is Dr. Eleanor Luce, and I will always be forever grateful for her. She just loved me, and she saw me, and she said, you know, I'm going to offer you a choice. Do you want to live or do you want to die? And when she asked me that question, she said, and I'm going to tell you something. If you want to die, no one's going to stop you from that. Mm. There are other methods, and she said, and there are quicker methods, and if you want to die, go for it. But if you want to live, I can show you how to live better. I can show you how to dissolve these things that are hurting you. And if you will just trust me and allow me to, I promise you, I will show you. And she did. She showed me really beautiful, mindful practices, emotional intelligence, um, self-awareness, mm -hmm. how to really dissolve these narratives and these stories. And so I went from that moment and I just practiced them. And so from that moment, from 15 to 25, literally, and I had a lot of setbacks. I would practice setback, practice setback, but every single time I would get to another level. And when I was 17, I moved out on my own. When I was uh, 19, I started making $30,000 a year, which was a lot at that time. Yes. I bought myself a car. I moved into my own apartment. I mean, and every single time I would use these practices, I would reach my mark and reach my success. Yes. I changed my life around from being full of despair into full of joy. If you know me, most people think, are you on drugs? Because I'm really happy. I'm oh, a wait. happy ch I'm happy. I'm free. I love it. I'm light. I'm supportive. I'm not, you know, I don't have any of those issues. Um, and I've worked on that. Yeah. And I've also worked on my success. And every single time I, you know, apply these methodologies, these pathways, I, I, I actually accomplish everything. So I changed my life from that to a leading lady to a globally recognized photographer now to a very successful entrepreneur who is married to an incredible person, great friendships. And so I literally said when I was on the OWN network and I started seeing that so many women and people in this, on this planet had no pathways, mm -hmm. had no tools. We're not taught how to love. We're not taught how to communicate. We're not taught how to get to the next level of ourself or our life. We're not taught how to let go. We're not taught how to forgive. I had to um, create a practice um, for you to literally help you drive your decisions and your behaviors better so that you can effectively engage and influence the life that you love. Right? Yes, that's beautiful, Chano. It's so powerful, your story of never giving up on yourself and just fighting, fighting for the light at the end of the tunnel. And you found it and you transformed it and it's worked for you. And I hope everybody listening that it gives hope to no matter what situation you're in that you can turn your life around. So thank you for sharing that, Chanel. Thank beautiful. you, of course. Thank you for asking me. Yeah, everybody who's listening, you know, every day is a new day. It's a new opportunity for you to literally have a life of your dreams. Mm. And the limitations that you have are just in your head. It's in your being. If you can master your mind you can master your emotions and your emotions drive your actions mm. and so that's why that's the pathway um for literally living life limitlessly i love it i love it so for anyone still searching for their purpose in life a quick few gems what would you give them if they're stuck they don't know what passion career what would you tell them if they came to you knocking on your door first things first um commit to you 
And what does committing to you look like, right? Committing to you looks like waking up every single morning, um, not giving your time and your energy to the world, but giving your time and your energy to yourself, creating joy within the first hour. Mm-hmm. How do you create joy within the first hour of your day? Right. And how do you connect into your power? That would be the second thing. Connect into your power. Aligning to your power means aligning to your faith. Without faith, there's no foundation. Mm -hmm. Right. And so whatever it is that you have to do to have your own relationship with your source, whatever that source is called, every single day you should be activating and igniting that connection Mm -hmm. so that you can hear beyond your triggers and your emotions and your needs and your, you know, your ego mind. Yeah. Um, and third, really, really starting to love yourself with compassion. Mm. Compassion is, is something that is, is a critical component because we're so hard on ourselves. We beat ourselves up so much, you know, and the, the, the conversation that you have with yourself is the conversation that shows up in your reality. Mm-hmm. Whatever it is that you're telling yourself is going to actually boomerang back to you in your in your reality so those are three pathways that you can start right now that you can control right now and that you can begin today that will literally change your life well there'll be step one of changing your life and then there's more work to do i love it it's always a ever ongoing road and yeah everybody listening i hope that if you're looking for advice to self-reflect and find your purpose listen to shanoa (laughs) <laughs> so I first met you at your incredible retreat in Bali what yeah. made you decide to start hosting retreats in Bali specifically and why do you think other people should join you on this beautiful island oh Bali Bali <laughs> mother Bali. you know um we're living in a really fantastic energy matrix mm. okay Um, And I say energy matrix because everything is energy. We're all energy. We're made up of energy frequency. Again, divine source frequency. And every single person has a a frequency that they're operating from. For me, when I go to Bali, Bali connects me with my oneness. It connects me with my home frequency on a soul level. Okay. And it does that for many, many people. And the reason being is Bali is a vortex. Mm. It's a a magical vortex. There are only, I think, seven in the world. And so these energetic places um, have, um, sorry, my assistant was, (laughs) these energetic um, places around the world, they actually do something to your spirit and to your soul. Mm. They, 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 they open up things to your awareness, to your psyche, um, to your spirit. Bali is one of the few places in the world that actually operates with both shadow and light. And so while other vortexes may open up, like Sedona is a, a vortex, it may operate on that one plane. Bali operates on both planes. And that's balance. Every one of us has a, a dark side and a light side. Yes. Okay. And we have to honor both of those sides. Bali actually operates and honors both of those sides. And they actually are in practice of it. When you go to Bali, especially Ubud, which is the spiritual hub and the artist hub of Indonesia, you watch them every day yeah. in practice, in prayer, in honor, in grace, in gratitude, in 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 brother and sisterhood they say hello they greet you they're so friendly and they they that vibration changes you watching someone especially people of color that's very important people of color you go there and you don't feel like you're outside of yourself because they're brown yes they're brown they're beautiful they're beautiful in their being okay and so just being in that country in that place bali especially ubud changes you Mm -hmm. fundamentally without even knowing it changes you on a subconscious level and so i chose because i do a lot of deep work um i I, for one week we go in we go in not only as um creating that opening of awareness um 
learning tools that will really shift you and, and move you to that next level of consciousness. But we also support one another. Mm -hmm. We have fun. We, 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 and then we take on that energy and we bring it home to ourselves. Yeah. To others. You're a perfect example of that, Anita. I mean, uh -huh. you came there and you literally beamed up and transported yourself and you committed just from one week, one week of that, that, you know, that energy expression, that energy exchange. Oh, thank right. you so much, Shanoa. And I did, to everyone listening, Shanoa, I call her my fairy godmother. The <laughs> sprinkles of energy, love and light that she gave to me really just fired up my battery back to just believe in myself again, kick off my own thing. It doesn't matter how it starts, slow, fast, keep going, hold yourself accountable. I love the gems that you gave me, Shanoa, and I'm carrying them for the rest of my life. I see that. Thank you so much. Yeah. So if you guys are, you know, if you're interested, I know that the world is at this incredibly opening point of evolution. Um, we are shifting and it is, change is always um, full of discomfort, full of unease, full of uncertainty. Um, but if you're interested in, in going higher and if you're interested in finding out why you're still stuck or, you know, you're just not attracting the things that you want, whether it's love or success, inner and outer, I would encourage you to join us. I mean, it is one week of bliss. <laughs> it really is. It really is. And as you have a myriad of talents, such as being an incredible actress, photographer, and emotional intelligence coach, to name a few, what does it mean to you to truly give your all or nothing? Well, before I say that, I think that coaching cheerleads you on and it moves you into that thing and I, it's great. I'm actually the bridge of change. Um, yeah, I like that. You know, yeah, I think, you know, people go to therapy for years, they sit on the couch just to get to that aha moment yeah. and that place where they have, oh my God, this is what's bothering me. And then when you have that discovery of what's bothering you, you don't know what to do to change it. Mm. <laughs> so therapy just takes you to that place. Coaching takes you to the place where you have a goal, you, you know what your goal is, I'm going to help you get to that destination. It keeps you accountable to that. Mm. But if you really want transformation and lasting change, you have to actually have the pathway and the tools to, to actually break that open, you know, break open your mindset mm. and create new neural pathways in your brain so that that becomes your daily being. Ooh. And so that's what I do. I'm that bridge of change. And so I, I just always like to clarify that for people because, yeah. um, you know, they don't know the difference. And so yeah, thank true. you for allowing me to do that. Yeah. Um, but can you repeat your question? Because I want to go back to that. Of course. As you have a myriad of talents and you've mixed and dabbled between acting, photography, your emotional intelligence, what does it mean to you to truly live your life giving all or nothing? What does it mean to me? to truly live my life giving all or nothing? Mm -hmm. That's a really beautiful question, Anita. Thank you Thank for you. asking me that. Thank you, Shannon. What does it mean for me to live my life giving all or nothing? That's an interesting question. It's the name of my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. You know, the way that I live my life giving all or nothing is the, cons the consistent expression of my being which is unconditional love. Um, I give unconditional love to everything. Yeah. And I also give it to nothing. Yeah. To those moments of silence, I just walk that path. I do everything that I do, everything, every part of my being is all about unconditional love. I think that that's my superpower. So that's how I would answer that question. I love that, Shanoa. Thank you. You're one of the first guests that really took the time to delve into that and really sit with it for a second. I really appreciate that. So thank you, Shanoa. No, yeah, it's a beautiful podcast name and it's a great question. And I think um, more people should um, delve deeper <laughs> in answering what that means for them, especially now. You know, Love that. thank you. That's made me, you know, made my heart smile with that comment. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Shanoa, and thank you to everybody listening. I appreciate you so much for being a guest today. And yeah, I'm sending you love and light for everything that's going on in the world right now. And take care of yourself. Thank you. And for all of the listeners who have um, gifted us with your time, 
if you like to reach out to me, my website is www.livelimitlessly.com. You can also find me at, at Shanoa Maxwell on any social platform, or you can go to Live Limitlessly um, and just go in, click that bio, um, <laughs> bio link and you can find me. I'd love to hear from you and I'm here for you. So I love that. it. Guys, lock in with Chinoa. She is the lady. <laughs> Thank you so much, Chinoa. Take care. Have a great day. Thank you for having me, Anita. Take care. You're more than welcome. Bye-bye. <laughs>